I finally got a hold of a Radeon 780M based mini PC. I, after testing out the APUs with the 680M from RDNA 2 based architecture, I really wanted to see what RDNA 3 based uh, APU systems could do. And spoiler alert, this is a screenshot of the 780M beating my GTX 1066 gigabytes uh, in um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now it's running in a uh, 7800X3D based uh, desktop PC, but again, I did put in a GTX 1066 gigabyte as a, you know, mid-range card from a number of years ago that a lot of people are still hanging on to in the Steam hardware survey. Obviously, a mini PC with integrated graphics is not going to beat my 4090, but how could it do up against a mid-range computer from a few years back that a lot of people are still using? Uh, that's what we're looking at in this video, and again, spoiler, we do get some wins for the 780M, which did not happen when I was testing my 680M uh, a while back. So very cool to see that. Now, I do also want to mention um, what is the system we're actually testing the 780M in. This is the GTR 7 Pro uh, from B-Link, and I will include a link in the description. Now, I will say they sent me this review sample for free, but this is not a sponsored video in the sense that this is an advertisement or they have any control over what I do. They just wanted to send me a review sample, and this is what I wanted to do with it. I wanted to see, can it beat a GTX 1060? How does the 780M game? Uh, but we should talk about the system that it's in, because not every 780M based system is going to be as performant as this GTR 7 Pro. First of all, it's a 7940HS based uh, Ryzen APU. This is 8 core, 16 thread Zen 4 part. Uh, also, uh, I had a one fast 1 terabyte uh, PCI Gen 4 SSD in here and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. Um, so the overall specs are down here. Um, and oh, by the way, yeah, it does have a cool little uh, fingerprint scanner on, on this thing, uh, Wi Fi 6. Uh, all of that, it's a really cool design overall. Again, the 780M that we're looking at here is an integrated uh, graphics chip based on the RDNA 3 architecture with 12 GPU cores built in. And the uh, specific design on this uh, this system is pretty cool. Uh, we're running 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. I think when I've tested out my um, uh, Minis Forum uh, 680M based system in the past, it struggled with 16 gigabytes of RAM and um, I, I think that it's actually making a big difference here is the uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 since you have to share memory between the, the uh, CPU and the GPU when you're on the um, uh, integrated graphics. And this RAM is running at 5600 megahertz. It's two 16 gigabyte uh, chips. Also, uh, this has two M.2 slots in this tiny form factor, which I think is really cool. And uh, speaking of cool, um, I think that this does a really good job of cooling this. Uh, here's some, uh, some, uh, some of their testing and advertisements here. Uh, overall, they're advertising this as like an eSports gaming PC. And I'm sure it can absolutely do that. Uh, but I decided to focus on let's stress test this thing in games that it's really not designed to play but that doesn't mean it can't play them. Like Cyberpunk, uh, what about Last of Us Part 1, which is crushing a lot of uh, newer PCs as a PlayStation 5 port, uh, things like that. So these are their performance claims uh, on eSports games. Also, here's how, how, how the blown out design looks here. They've got a, a pretty cool um, vapor chamber set up here, radiator, all that. Um, anyway, it is a very cool uh, little setup. Um, th there's the dimensions. Uh, eh, uh, if I get out of your way for a second, it comes in various uh, colors and all of that. Uh, let's run the benchmarks and then I'll give you some final thoughts at the end. Starting out with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which does use the same graphics engine as Warzone, although the Warzone 2 uh, could be a little heavier on the CPU. I didn't test it out in that mode. Uh, we're seeing the 780M actually score a win against the trusty old <laughs> GTX 1066 gigabyte. And it's only by 3%, but 19% in the 1% lows. And honestly, this is just incredibly impressive to me. I know the 1060 is uh, definitely aging at this point, but still seeing a tiny mini PC with an integrated uh, APU graphics actually beat it, and we're at the 1080p basic settings, to be clear here, uh, was very impressive. Now, what if you're actually playing this game competitively on this thing? 
So I decided, what if we actually used FSR 2 at the performance mode, which I know at 1080p doesn't look great, but this is a competitive game, so the idea would be get all the performance that you can. Well, we still see the 780M winning by 3%, although this time the 1% lows are basically tied, although it is a 1% lead for the 780M. And now we're averaging over 100 frames per second, even the 1% lows are at almost 80 putting up a very, very playable and even competitive experience on the 780M. But at this point I was thinking, okay, if it's crushing a, a competitive game, can it play Cyberpunk? So, well, I first tried it out at 1080p low settings. And at these settings, yes, it can absolutely play Cyberpunk. No, it's not a locked 60 frames per second, but we're also way beyond 30 frames per second. I can't tell you how much better 40 frames per second feels than 30 frames per second. Um, feels a lot better. So uh, here is the 1060 winning, yes, but only by 7%. I think you would actually be very hard pressed to tell the difference between which, uh, which system you were playing on here, which is again, pretty crazy uh, considering it's a uh, integrated uh, little uh, mini PC, which so anyway, this really, uh, stood out um, impressing me here. Now in this open city area, I did feel like the 1% lows dipped a bit. Um, I don't think it's CPU related, but I was actually curious if it, if it could have been. Uh, now, I was actually curious, could we get a 60 frames per second experience? So I tried turning on, okay, FSR2 at the quality setting. So yes, this is low settings with F FSR2 quality upscaling, which doesn't look amazing at 1080p. We can start to see a little more uh, aliasing on the fence line here and the palm tree branches, a little bit of instability, things like that. And the 1060 is still winning, this time by 8% and 26% in the 1% lows. Remember, it's on a higher end CPU, so that could be related here. But we are getting just about a 60 frames per second average on the 780M. Uh, just shy of it, although the, actually we did finish with 60 average, but the 1% lows are a bit further back. So at this point I was like, okay, if you can get a 60 frames per second experience in this game by tweaking uh, you know, some upscaling on the low settings, okay, let's just torture test this thing and go up to ultra. So by going up to the ultra settings, neither <laughs> test system's doing well here. Uh, the GTX 1060 is struggling to try to average 30 with definitely 1% lows well below that. Although now the 780M system is falling further behind. It's a 15% lead uh, for the 1060 on average, but 64% in the 1% lows. So you definitely are not gonna be wanting to play this game at ultra settings, which is um, understandable. I was curious though, if uh, just using some upscaling, but keeping the graphics crank to ultra was gonna be a realistic thing to do. Uh, but it did not look like it completely solved the issues with the 1% lows, although it did at least get the averages over 30 frames per second. Um, the 1060 was still ahead by 19% here and 81% in the 1% lows. Now noticing, I, I was looking at the VRAM usage here. I was wondering why is the 1060 doing so much better relatively here than it did in our earlier tests. Uh, I believe the APU is allocating four gigabytes of VRAM dedicated to the uh, graphics. Uh, chip and the 1060 has six and it's using five. So I think this could be a VRAM spillover related. So I was curious as we turn down settings, how performance would change. So I went ahead and tested out 1080p high settings. And um, while the 1060 is able to average 30 here, it still has 1% lows below 30, um, but a lot smoother frame time graph if you compare frame time graphs. Uh, the B-Link system here, with the 780M is not averaging 30 and it does have the 1% lows, especially down a bit lower. So it's a 56% lead in the 1% lows, especially as it goes through this city section here. That seems to be um, uh, rough on the 1% lows on the uh, 780M based system. So I was like, okay, let's give this setting another chance with upscaling. I was honestly, you guys might be like, wow, are you really gonna test like every single setting on uh, on Cyberpunk here? I was having a lot of fun testing out this uh, 780M based system, just seeing how far could we push it. Uh, well, uh, with the high settings with FSR2 on quality, it's still not solving the issues in the 1% lows. And I'm still noticing the VRAM spillover. It's averaging actually up in the mid thirties now. 
Uh, but this 1060 is winning by 29% here, and 1% lows are over double the performance. Uh, so this did not solve the problems for the uh, Radeon 780M based system. And again, I think this could be VRAM related. So going down to medium settings, I found this was very interesting. Uh, if you look at the GTX 1060, it's now allocating about four gigabytes and using less, uh, a bit less than that. And now suddenly the 1% lows are so much better on our 780M based system. And once again, the 1060 is only ahead by about 5% on the averages and 12% in the 1% lows. And the 1% lows on the 780M are now very close to 30 frames per second, meaning you get um, an, you could frame rate cap to 30 and get a pretty good experience on the 780M based system here. Uh, which uh, would be a pretty interesting way to play the game. So I do think, at least in Cyberpunk, it seemed to be a VRAM issue, and once we got the settings under control for that, uh, things were a lot better. So then sticking to the medium preset, but also engaging FSR2 at the quality settings, so you lose some stability in some of the details, um, but you gain a lot of performance here. Uh, now, actually, check it out. The 780M is averaging around 50 frames per second, and its 1% lows are up near 40. This is actually a very, very, very good experience. I mean, relatively you know, to what it is, right? We're not locking 60 FPS, but the game actually looks pretty good at these settings um, you know, for these kinds of expectations and is performing quite well, very playable. 12% lead for the 1060 here and 24% in the 1% lows. Now, I think that's enough cyberpunk. But considering we could get Cyberpunk running so well, I mean, we even could hit 60 FPS with the right settings, I thought, okay, let's try out one of the latest uh, PC-crushing PS5 exclusives that got ported to PC with The Last of Us Part 1. This one is very VRAM hungry, so uh, I knew this, this could be a bit of a torture test here. And sure enough, the 1060 6GB is winning by 33% here and 20% in the 1% lows. And the 780M base system is under 30 FPS. The 1060 could uh, average in the mid 30s here with the 1% lows right around 30. So you could get a decent locked 30 experience at 1080p medium on the 1060. Uh, but what if we tried upscaling a bit? So uh, kicking on FSR2 at the quality settings. So we do lose some stability to the image and motion especially. And the 1060 is uh, winning by 31% here and 27% uh, in the 1% lows, but the 780M is now has its 1% lows over 30 frames per second, uh, averaging around 36, which means you actually could get a nice locked 30 FPS experience, uh, at least in the section of the game that I'm testing here on the 780M based system in one of the most demanding games here. And again, that was medium with um, upscaling. So now I thought, okay, what if you wanna play it in native 1080p? What if we drop down to the low settings? And dropping down to the low settings at a native 1080p actually would get us over 30 frames per second in the averages and the 1% lows on our 780M based system, uh, which I, I thought was very, very cool. But the 1060 is beating it by 28% on the averages and 19% in the 1% lows. And again, I'm suspicious that this is because of the VRAM, because you can see the 1060 is going well over four gigabytes of VRAM uh, in this setup. Uh, I did try out enabling FSR2 quality at the low setting just to see how far we could push the frame rate. The 1060 is now almost a 60 FPS experience in this game, um, whereas the 780M is in the mid 40s, including 1% lows up that high. So uh, again, games in the mid 40s feel pretty responsive, especially a game uh, at, at this kind of pace. So very, very playable experience, even in a game like The Last of Us Part 1, uh, which is very interesting. Now, I also tested out some games that are a little bit less demanding, like Forza Horizon 5 at its medium preset, and here, the 780M is averaging close to 70 frames per second. The 1060 is a little bit above. The uh, 780M is a little bit below 70. It's only a 6% lead for the 1066 gigabyte here and 2% in the 1% lows. And again, if you look at the VRAM counter on the 1060, we're at around three gigabytes allocated which means that, again, it seems like when they're not constrained by, the, by spilling over four gigabytes of VRAM in some of the heavy late uh, new games, uh, these GPUs really actually do perform roughly on par. Um, I even tried turning up to the high settings. Notice that the 1060 was staying under four gigabytes, 
And our 780M system is actually averaging 60, although the 1% lows are down around 51, but that's true on both systems. They're almost tied in the 1% lows. And the uh, 1060 is only head by 10% here. And like I said, both of them are averaging, well, we're getting 60 average versus 65 average um, at 1080p high settings in Forza Horizon 5. This is a really great experience and a nice smooth frame time graph. Now, knowing that VRAM was an issue, I decided to try out one more game that really does push VRAM quite a bit. This is Resident Evil 4 Remake, 1080p at the prioritized graphics. So that's like its max preset that doesn't include any kind of ray tracing. And the 1060 is just crushing uh, the 780M based system here by uh, you know 52% lead on average, 61% the 1% lows. The 780M is under 30 frames per second, whereas the 1060 is very playable at a 40 FPS average. Um, if we try kicking on FSR2 at the quality preset but leaving everything maxed out, actually the 780M is now putting up a surprisingly decent uh, 30 FPS uh, in the 1% lows and over 30 FPS average, meaning you actually could get a pretty decent locked 30 experience on the 780M. However, the 1060 is up around 50 FPS and is winning by 55% uh, on averages and 68% in the 1% lows. Um, so now I tried turning down some settings. So I went down to the balanced preset. At the balanced preset, uh, the 1060 is still winning by 46% and 48% in the 1% lows. Uh, the 780M is delivering over 30 FPS average. The 1% lows are close to 30, so you could probably get a pretty decent locked 30 FPS experience at a native 1080p balanced here, uh, which is not terrible. Now this is more of a cross-gen game, so it does I think uh, think a little bit more about you know support for uh, older consoles, so you know you can, can turn things down quite a bit. If we especially if we go down uh, using FSR2 quality on top of being down at the balanced preset, we're now actually seeing the 780M averaging over 40 FPS with the 1% lows up actually near 40. Not a bad experience at all, but the 1060 is closing in on just shy of a 60 FPS experience at these settings. So it is still ahead by 42% average and 56% in the 1% lows. But I did try out one more preset. This is basically a low preset, although in this game it's called Prioritize Performance. And at native 1080p, uh, we are getting a um, up in the upper 40s average on the 780M. Um, whereas the 1060 is av actually averaging at this moment about 69 nice FPS, so close to 70 FPS on the 1060. And again, this is native 1080p, but we just had to go down to the prioritized performance setting in order to get there. Notice the big difference is that we're under four gigabytes of VRAM here, and that's helping out the 780M quite a bit. Uh, now going down to FSR2 quality on top of being down at the prioritized prioritized performance preset, we are now seeing the 780M almost getting us a 60 FPS average. It's more like in the mid 50s uh, and the 1% lows in the mid 40s, whereas the 1060 is pushed all the way up to an 80 FPS average and it has a 52% lead. So this game wasn't the best for the 780M versus the 1060. Overall, I was extremely impressed by what this 780M based system from B-Link was able to do. And uh, I think it was really cool that we saw it get some wins against the 1060 six gigabyte. Now I will say that like Call of Duty, for example, is at, does tend to just really like AMD GPUs uh, versus Nvidia. So I think that could have factored into this bit of a win here. But we saw it not too far behind in a lot of other situations. As I noted during the benchmark run, I think the VRAM capacity uh, did seem to be at least related to that where the um, 780M seems to get allotted a four gigabyte VRAM buffer. Now I'm not a real expert with APUs to be honest. Maybe it's possible to change that beyond the four gigabyte limit since we have 32 gigabytes on the system. Maybe Maybe we've uh, seen some um, some better results there. I'm out of time on testing here, um, but uh, the other thing I want to look into, uh, well, I think that I think would be interesting is that I have the six gigabyte version of the 1060. There's also a three gigabyte version, which is a little bit slower and has less VRAM. I have a feeling we would have seen more wins for this uh, 780M based system if we were up against a, uh, the, a three gigabyte version of the 1060. That would have been pretty interesting. Now, I do wanna make sure that I'm clear about the fact though, that I'm not saying that this B-Link based, uh, you know, you know uh, 780M based system is the best value gaming system that you can get. 
uh, for, uh, I think this is around $869 is I think what it lists for. It has some cool color choices and stuff too. If you're just looking for performance, right? You're paying for this cool, tiny little form factor. I do want to be clear that if you're just trying to build a gaming PC for around $850, uh, you could build something that is going to perform much better than this does, but it's not going to be in a tiny little mini PC. <laughs> so there's something to be said for the mini PC. Maybe you just don't have room for a big full de uh, tower uh, for a desktop PC. Um, maybe uh, you just like the cool little form factor, something like that. Uh, for me personally, what am I going to do with this? Um, well, it's the summer right now, but a lot of you guys know I'm a high school teacher, and I've had my little um, minis forum PC uh, with the 680M set up on my desk at work, and I do play games on it on my lunch break. <laughs> um, uh, but I think it's definitely going to get swapped out for this B-Link GTR 7 Pro, uh, because I think that's going to greatly expand, first of all, what it's able to do uh, gaming-wise. Um, but also, I just really like the look of it. It is um, uh, just a really cool little system, like the fingerprint sensor, all of that. Uh, I'm a big fan of the overall design of the thing. So if you are in the market for a mini PC and you understand the limitations of a mini PC versus just building a whole big desktop computer, um, then I really do uh, have, have nothing but positive things to say about my time using this thing. Uh, anyway, I hope uh, this video was interesting for you guys. If you're just curious how far have the uh, RDNA 3 based uh, APUs come uh, performance wise, and then also if you are in the market for a mini PC. Um, I was again focusing mostly on the gaming performance of the 780M, uh, so I'm sure there's other people out there who have done more thorough uh, reviews of using it just uh, on a day to day experience. I didn't run into any issues, um, and overall was, like I said, I, I like the form factor, I like the design. Um, uh, liked its performance. So overall, just positive things to say from me. Uh, I, a huge thank you to all my channel subscribers and channel members who hit the join button down below to actually financially support the channel directly. That is just amazing to me that some of you guys have done that. Uh, and a uh, huge thank you to everybody who views the videos, all of that, positive comments, everything. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.